what are we doing right now? Yeah, uh, Jeff, where are we going now? Uh, we're going to calves. So you guys, so John has you guys do calves on on, on arm day? No, it varies. Uh, usually we do uh, we ro- we rotate abs and calves. So we're gonna go over to calves now. What's 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 John's philosophy here on calves, uh, Chris? What do you what do you uh, what exercise do you usually do for calves, and, and how many sets do you usually do? Uh, usually our sets are you know usually between you know nine and ten sets. Uh, usually not too many. Uh, rep range. I used to tend to I tend to use a a higher rep range rep range for calves than I do for other exercises. I have a I have a problem getting my calves to grow, so I uh, I keep a rep range of closer to you know 15 16 reps with this. I had the same problem and uh, that early in my career, and I found that the 15 rep range works works a lot better. Um, Jeff, you ever notice when you're doing calves, you know, and I always talk about people is whenever we do calves with these training series that um, as the sets go on, the bottom of your feet start hurting more and more. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, that's sometimes why it's better to use lighter weight with more reps because you know sometimes I find that when you go too heavy, the, the bottom of your feet hurts so much you don't even feel it in your calves anymore. Ever happened to you? Yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> Um, all right, what what are we doing here? We're going to start with standing or this donkey calf? Uh, donkeys. And what are you uh, focusing on when you do the donkey calf? Um, usually just uh, the lower part of the uh, calf. And let me just ask you a question because a lot of people don't realize that this is probably intuitive to you. You probably do it just by nature. But when you're going up on, on your feet, on your toes, uh, are you rolling towards the, the, the ball of the big toe or are you rolling out to the, the, the little toe? No, I'm rolling into the ball of the big toe. Right, because that's that's how the calf contracts maximally, and I think a lot of people make that mistake too. Um, how many reps are you doing here? Uh, just my first set, so it's a warm-up. Anywhere from 12 to 15 reps. I noticed you don't have your knees locked out. Um, is that a technique you like to do? You know, a lot of people, Victor Martinez is that, and a lot of people, you know, don't lock the knees out. And I, I, per, I, I think personally that it's uh, you feel a little more in the calves. What's your thought on that? No, I tend, if I don't have my knees bent, I tend to feel it more in my hamstrings than having my uh, knees bent when I, and I don't. It's important, though, it's important to remember here, though, that while the knee is bent, it's locked. In other words, it's not moving up and down. So your, your leg is, is locked, it's just not in, in a, stress, a stretched out position, correct? Right. Same thing, Chris. You know, what, what's your feeling about as far as, you know, keeping the leg straight as opposed to bending? I pretty much keep the same philosophy with uh, with all my joints. You know, it's, I find it's best not to lock the joint out altogether. Just you know, one to prevent injury, and uh, especially with uh, with your elbows, your knees, do that. You know, just bench, benching, squatting, pretty much everything. I don't like to to lock it out. My my joints feel a little vulnerable once it's it's locked out. So you keep continuous tension at all times, right? Which actually makes it a lot harder. Now, whose whose calves are these? That, is, is that Jeff's? Jeff doesn't have any calf problems, I see. <laughs> nope. <laughs> did you always have those big calves even as a kid? Yeah, I did. Parents had big calves? Uh, yeah, on my mom's side, yeah. My God, that's a gigant, gigundo. Um, so pretty much anything you do builds your calves. Pretty much. See, if you got good calves, it doesn't even matter. You don't even have to train them. <laughs> now, what about you, what about you, Chris? Have you always struggled with calves, or uh, I mean, you're still young, obviously, so you haven't been training. But everyone's laughing, so I guess I hit a sore point. Yeah, calves don't run in my family like they do in Jeff's. Um, I actually joked with him before we started. I said, if if we go into calf training, that's where I'm bailing out of the workout. But uh, it's a work in progress. You're not rolling your pants. No, not yet. Well, you you see the next set. I got brave. You get great. Huh? Yeah. All right, how many sets are we doing here, Jeff? Uh, three sets. So three sets of about 15 reps? No, three sets of uh, about 8 to 10 reps. Let me ask you a question. When you guys get home after doing calves, you got trouble walking the steps, Chris? I'm hoping to have one day have trouble walking, <laughs> walking the steps. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we do train calves, you know, t- two, two, three times a week. So, uh so you kind of become accustomed to the feeling. It's it's actually a good feeling at this point. Now, what, what what gym, Jeff, do you train at out in New Jersey? Uh, LA Fitness. LA, wow, that doesn't sound much like a bodybuilder's gym to me. <laughs> um, it's the only gym I have near me where I live. Well, you both train there, correct? No, no, no. Um, I couple I come up uh, every Friday up to uh, Strong Shapely. Ah, Bob Bottom gym. Yeah, and that's where I train with Chris. Okay, so you and Chris train every Friday together. Is that when you when you train? Yeah, I, I live up in North Jersey, so I uh, I train at at, uh, at Strong and Shapely during the week and the weekends. 
they got some pretty good equipment there too. I've, I've been there many, many times. Yeah, it actually it, you know compares pretty similar to uh, to Powerhouse here. It's um, you know it's got a ton of equipment. It's got a uh, you know got a lot of real old machines that you don't really see anymore. But those are uh, you know those are the uh, the tried and proven machines that uh, have been building muscle forever. All right, now let me ask you a question, Jeff. What time? Of, I, I've had a couple wacky people here training. Desmond Miller trains at midnight every night. Victor Martinez sometimes comes in at nine, ten o'clock at night. Trains. No matter, I don't think he's even gotten here yet. But uh, what, what time do you guys normally train during the day? And uh, you know, how many hours do you get of sleep a night? Uh, normally, I train probably about five o'clock. Um, usually, when I got about four or five meals in me, and um, usually, I get about eight to nine hours of sleep a night. Perfect. Now, Chris, let me ask you a question. Um, how do you feel about you know training like first thing in the morning or after just having like a like a shake in the morning? Like I, I know a lot of people like to get to the gym early. Personally, my body's not awake. I, I can't train unless I have some few meals in me personally. But um, how do you feel about that? My body usually doesn't wake up till about noon, so I, uh, I I basically never get to the gym unless I got at least three meals in me. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll get up early. I'll have my breakfast. On a weekend, I'll go back to bed, eat again, maybe take another nap. Get up, uh, have lunch, and then head, head over to the gym. But uh, I, I don't, I don't like training early. It's um, my body's not warmed up, and uh, you know, it, it almost feel if, not vulnerable. But uh, I feel like I'm more apt to injure myself if I'm not, my body's not fully, you know, loose and ready to go. Yeah, I, I find the same thing. How many hours of sleep a night? Uh, I shoot for eight. Usually end up somewhere around seven. But uh, that's um, that's the goal. At least eight a night. You're taking a nap too, right? Uh, not during the week. There's no naps during the week, but I make sure I get them in, uh, <laughs> get plenty of them in during the weekend. And this is, uh, this is when I decided to get a little brave and roll up, roll up my pants a little bit. You're not doing too bad of that yourself. You got some calves going on there. You're, just, you're tall. It'd take a little, take a little longer. By the time you're 26, 27, you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> what kind? Now, do you guys uh, think that uh, I always had a theory about you know what kind of sneakers I wore when I did calves? Do you guys ever? change your shoes when you do calves or anything like that you feel that you're better off having a sneaker with less support more support uh, usually when I know I'm gonna work calves I wear more of a flat shoe and uh, it's just there's just less pressure off my heels gotcha yeah I, I, I tend to agree with that 